हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमा ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निवशेष शून्यवारी पश्चाश धारिणे पूर्णाम पूर्णाचते पूर्णा पूर्णा पूर्णाशिष्यशवाशम सर्व यम जगत तेन चेन भुंजिता मिधाकन कूर्वाने वर्मा चीवशेत स लिप्यते नारे नारे लोका वृता ये के चत्मनो आने जरे कम मन सो जो नायन देवाम पूर्वाम अर्षत यास्तुर्वाणी भूतानी सर्वूतेषु छो नवी चुपसते यस्वाणी भूतानी अथम बुद्धि जनता त्र को मोह का शोक एक अनुपश्यत सुपर्यज शुक्रम कयाम वृणम अस्नावीर शुद्धम अफाफाधम कबीर मनीषी परिभु स्वयंभूर यथा चतुदन व्यदाशंती ये विद्यम उपासते चो भूय थे थमो या उद्यय रुर्जया अदाहूर विजया शुशुमधीरण यन स्थाचक्षिरे वेद्यम चाद्यम चेदो भय सह अवेद्यामृचुम तीर्थ विद्यामृत अश्नुते अंधम तम प्रवशंति ये संबुतिमुपासते तथो भूय थे तमो यऊ संबुचम रहा आनयादू संभवादाहूर संभवादीरण ये स्थाई चक्षिरे संभूति विनशम चास्थाद्वीरो भय सह विनशेनामृचुम तीर्थ संभूत्यमृत अश्नुते हिराण्मेन पात्रेन सत्यशापिहित मुख तत्वुषाणु सत्यधर्मयुरीषाने कर्षयाम सूय प्रजपत व्यूहरास्मूह तेजोयाथे रूपम कायन थम तथे पशा यो सव सौ पुषा सोहम अस्मी वायुरानीलमृत अथेदम भस्म शरीर ओं कृथो स्मृत स्म स्मरा स्मरा 
Ishvani Deva Vayunani Vidvan, Yayodia Smart Suhurana Meno, Uyishtam Te Nama Uptim Videma. Om Purnam Madaha Purnam Yidam, Purnat Purnam Udachate, Purnasya Purnam Madaya, Purnam Eva Vashishate. Today we're on Mantra 15. You want to move it up to 15? What happened? There we go. <clears throat> Ram Mayena Patrina. Repeat. Mayena Patrina. Satyasya Pihitam Mukam. Satyasya Pihitam Mukam. Satyam Pushana Parinu. Satyadharmayadrishtaye <laughs> Satchadharmayadrishtaye. <laughs> Someone else like to chant? Kiran Mai Patrena Satyasya Pihitam Mukham Satyasya Pihitam Mukham Tatvam Pushana Pa Bruno Tatvam Pushana Pa Bruno Tatta Dharma Yadrishyati Hiran Mayena Patrena Hiran Mayena Patrena Satyasya Pihitam Mukam Satyasya Pihitam Mukam Tatvam Pushana Apavrano Tatvam Pushana Apavrano Satya Dharmaya Drishtaye Satya Dharmaya Drishtaye Hiran Mayena Patrena Hiran Mayena Patrena Satya 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 Tatvam Pushana Pravinu Tatvam Pushana Pavinu Satya Dharmaya Dishtaye Satya Dharmaya Dishtaye Hiram Mayena Patrena Hiram Mayena Patrena Satya Satya Ya Pihitam Mukham Satya Ya Pihitam Mukham Tatvam Pushana Purvano Tatvam Pushana Pavano Satya Dharma Yadrishtaya Satya Dharma Yadrishtaya Hiran Mayena Patrena Hiran Mayena Patrena Satya Sya Pihitam Mukham Satya Pushana Pavruno Satya Dharmaya Drishtaye Satya Dharmaya Drishtaye Hiran Mayena Patrena Satya Sapihita Mukam Satya Sapihita Mukam Tatam Purushana Pavanu Tatam Purushana Pavanu 
ಸತ್ಯಧರ್ಮಯ ದುಷ್ಟೇ ಹಿರಣ್ಮಯೇನ ಪಾತ್ರೇನ ಸತ್ಯಧರ್ಮಾಯ ದೃಷ್ಟೇ ಹಿರಣ್ಮಯೇನ ಪಾತ್ರೇನ ಸತ್ಯಧರ್ಮಾಯ ದೃಷ್ಟೇ by a golden effulgence by a golden effulgence patrena patrena by a dazzling covering by a dazzling covering satyasya satyasya of the supreme truth of the supreme truth api hitam api hitam covered covered mukam mukam ಕಂಡ್ಲಿ ರಿಮೂವ್ ಸತ್ಯಾಟಿಂಗ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಓ ಮೈ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟೇನರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಲಿವ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಯುವರ್ ಡ್ಯಾಸ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಇಫೋಲ್ಜನ್ಸ್ kindly remove it kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee report in the bhagavad gita 1427 the lord explains his personal rays brahma jyotir the dazzling effulgence of his personal form in this way brahmano hi pratishtaham amritasya vyavasya cha shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya kanti kasya cha I am the basis of the impersonal brahman which is immortal imperishable and eternal and is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness brahman parmatma and bhagavan are three aspects of the same absolute truth brahman is the aspect most easily perceived by the beginner parmatma the super soul is realized by those who have further progressed and bhagavan realization is the ultimate realization of the absolute truth this is confirmed in the bhagavad gita 77 where lord krishna says that he is the ultimate concept of the absolute truth mata parataram nanyat therefore krishna is the source of the brahma jyoti as well as the all pervading paramatma later in the bhagavad gita 1042 krishna further explains atava bahuna tena kim yatena tabarjuna vishtabhya ham idam kritsnam ekam shena stito jagat but what need is there arjun for all this detailed knowledge with a single fragment of myself i pervade and support this entire universe thus by his one plenary plenary expansion the all pervading paramatma the lord the lord maintains the complete material cosmic creation he also maintains all manifestations in the spiritual world therefore in this shruti mantra of shri ishupanishad the lord is addressed as pushan the ultimate maintainer someone else like to read 
The personality of Godhead Sri Krishna is always filled with transcendental bliss, Ananda Maya Prasad. When he was present at Vindavan in India 5,000 years ago, he always remained in transcendental bliss, even from the beginning of his childhood pastimes. The killings of various demons such as Agha, Baka, Putana and Pralamba were but pleasure exertion for him. In his village of Rindavan, he enjoyed himself with his mother, brother, and friends. And when he played the role of a naughty but a thief, all his associates enjoyed celestial bliss by his stealing. The Lord's fame as a butter thief is not reapproachable, for by stealing butter, the Lord gave pleasure to his pure devotees. Everything the Lord did in Rindavan was for the, was for the pleasure of his associates there. The Lord created these pastimes to attach the dry speculators and acrobats of the so-called Hatha Yoga system who wish to find the absolute truth. Of the childhood play between the Lord and his playmates, the cowherd boy Sukhdev Goswami says in Srimad Bhagavatam 10.12.11 Itam satam brahma sukhanubhutaya dasyam gatanam paradevatena maya shitanam naradarakena sakyam vijaru prita punna punja <laughs> The personality, the personality of Godhead, who is perceived as the impersonal, blissful Brahman by the Jnanis, who is worshipped as the Supreme Lord by devotees in the mood of servitorship, and who is considered an ordinary human being by mundane people, played with the cowherd boys who had attained their position after accumulating many pious activities. Thus, the Lord is always engaged in transcendental love, loving activities with his spiritual associates in the various relationships of santa, uh, shanta, sorry, neutrality, dasya, servitorship, sakya, friendship, vatsalya, parental affection, and madhurya, conjugal love. Since it is said that Lord, uh, Lord Krishna never leaves in Damadam, one may ask how he manages the affairs of the creation. This is answered in the Bhagavad Gita 13.14 to 18. The Lord pervades the material, entire material creation by his plan, plenary part known as the Paramatma or Super Soul. Although the Lord personally has nothing to do with material creation, maintenance and destruction, he causes all these things to be done by his plenary expansion, the Paramatma. Every living entity is known as Atma Soul and the principal Atma who controls them all is Paramatma, the Super Soul. This system of God realization is a great science. The materialistic Sankhya, Sankhya Yogis can only analyze and meditate on the 24 factors of the material creation for they have very little information of the Purusha, the Lord and the impersonal translation transcendentalists are simply bewildered by the glaring effulgence of the Brahma Jyoti. If one wants to see the absolute truth in full, one has to penetrate beyond the 24 material elements and the glaring effulgence as well. Sri Shopanishad points toward this direction, praying for the removal of the Hiranmaya Patra, the dazzling cover of the Lord. Unless this covering is removed, so one can perceive the real face of the personality of Godhead, Factual realization of the absolute truth can never be achieved. The Paramatma feature of the personality of Godhead is one of the three plenary expansions, or Vishnu Tattvas, collectively known as the Purusha Avatars. One of the Vishnu Tattvas who is within the universe is known as Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. He is Vishnu among the three principal deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. He is, and he is the all-pervading Paramatma in each and every individual living entity. The second Vishnu Tattva within the universe is Garbhodakshaya Vishnu, the collective super soul of all living entities. Beyond these two is Karnadakshaya Vishnu, who lives in the casual ocean. He is the creator of all universes. The yoga system teaches the serious student to meet the Vishnu Tattva after going beyond the 24 material elements of the cosmic creation. The culture of empire philosophy helps one realize that the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, 
which is the glaring effulgence of the transcendental body of Lord Sri Krishna. That the Brahma Jyoti is Krishna's effulgence is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 14.27, as well in, as the Brahma Samhita 5.40. Yasya prava prava vato jagadanda koti koti ashesha vasudabi vibhuti vinam tad brahma nishkala mananta ashesha bhutam govinda madi purusham sadaham bhajami In the millions and millions of universes, there are innumerable planets and each and every one of them is different from the others by its cosmic constitution. All of these planets are situated in the corner of the Brahma Jyoti. This Brahma Jyoti is but the personal rays of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, whom I worship. This mantra from the Brahma Samhita has spoken from the platform of factual realization of the absolute truth. And the Shruti mantra of Sri Ishupanishad under discussion confirms this mantra as a process of realization. The Ishupanishad mantra is a simple prayer to the Lord to remove the Brahma Jyoti so that one can see his real face. The Brahma Jyoti effulgence is described in several mantras of the Mundaka Upanishad. Hiran, hiran Maye Parakoshe Virajam Brahma Nishkalam Tachubbaram Jyoti Shidnam Jyoti Stadyam Atma Vidovidu Natatka Shuryo Bhati Nachandra Tatka Tatrakam ब्रह्मदक्षिणेतास्कोतारेनादस्तोर्दवंचाप्रस्नातं In the spiritual realm beyond the material covering is the unlimited Brahman effulgence, which is free from material contamination. That effulgent white light is understood by transcendentalists to be the light of all lights. In that realm, there is no need of sunshine, moonshine, fire, or electricity for illumination. Indeed, whatever illumination appears in the material world is only a reflection of that supreme illumination. That Brahman is in front and in the back, in the north, south, east, and west, and also overhead and below. In other words, that supreme Brahman effulgence spreads throughout both the material and spiritual skies. Perfect knowledge means knowing Krishna as the root of this Brahman effulgence. This knowledge can be gained from such scriptures as Srimad Bhagavatam, which perfectly elaborates the science of Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the author Srila Vyasadev has established that one will describe the supreme truth as Brahman, Paramatma or Bhagavan according to one's realization of him. Srila Vyastev never states that the Supreme Truth is a jiva, an ordinary living entity. The living entity should never be considered the all-powerful Supreme Truth. If he were the Supreme, he would not need to pray to the Lord to remove his dazzling cover so that the living entity could see his real face. The conclusion is that one who has no knowledge of the potencies of supreme truth will realize the impersonal Brahman. Similarly, when one realizes the material potencies of the Lord, but has little or no information of the spiritual potencies, he attains Paramatma realization. Thus, both Brahman and Paramatma realization of the absolute truth are partial realizations. However, when one realizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, in full potency, after the removal of the hidden Maya Patra, one realizes Vashudeva Sarvamiti. Lord Sri Krishna, who is known as Vashudeva, is everything, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. He is Bhagwan, the root, and Brahman and Paramatma are his branches. In the Bhagavad Gita 6.4647, <clears throat> there is a comparative comparative analysis of the three types of transcendentalists. Thanks. The worshippers of the impersonal Brahma Jnanis, the worshippers of the Paramatma feature yogis, 
and the devotees of Lord Sri Krishna Bhaktas. It is stated there that the jnanis, those who have cultivated Vedic knowledge, <coughs> are better than ordinary fruitive workers, that the yogis are still greater than the jnanis, and that among all yogis. Those who constantly serve the Lord with all their energies are at the are the topmost. In summary, a philosopher is better than a labor, laboring man. A mystic is superior to a philosopher and all the mystic yogis. He who follows bhakti yoga, constantly engaging in the service of the Lord, is the highest. Sri, Upan Sri Ipo Isho Upanishad directs us towards this perfection. Oh, my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee. This is a very popular mantra. I'm sure your Bhakti Shastris will be learning this one. Um, <clears throat> anyone notice that anything different about this mantra in comparison to the other mantras so far? In what way, Jiva? In the nature of the, the nature of the mantra. Um, um, what it's saying. I mean, this is a very popular mantra that speaks about someone who's attracted to Brahman and Paramatma cannot see Krishna's face because the dazzling effulgence. Well, um, what I guess we're it. looking for is that um, the other mantras were helping us to understand the Lord, um, his position, his qualities, how he's the controller and the owner, uh, Ishavasham, uh, about the Lord. Uh, being pure, antiseptic, prophylactic. He's above the four defects, a poor shaya, um, that he's the fulfiller of desires. It's describing the Lord. The previous mantras are describing the Lord and that he's the one who should be worshipped. But now these, they're offering prayers to the Lord. So this one is actually... Um, first, the Lord's being glorified with all the other mantras. And now the last four mantras, the devotee is uh, making a request to the Lord. And actually, I have read, I remember reading in the Srimad Bhagavatam that that is the proper way to offer prayers to the Lord, is to first you glorify the Lord, and then you make your petition. And um, in 15, mantra 15 and 16, this devotee is requesting the Lord to remove his dazzling effulgence. Uh, the effulgence is the Brahma Jyoti is considered the light of all lights. It's dazzling. It's actually very attractive. It's so bright um, that nothing can be compared. Even though this is beautiful and attractive, what's even more attractive is the one behind it. So this devotee is asking the Lord to remove this curtain. You know, sometimes the curtains, they block our vision. So this Brahma Jyoti is sometimes like a curtain, you know, please remove that so I can see your real, all blissful, beautiful form. Um, Prabhupada said that this mantra actually is evidence, Vedic evidence, because it's from the Yajur Veda. So it's evidence of the Lord's personal existence beyond the blaring Brahma Jyoti effulgence. And um, Vandanam is one, offering prayers to the Lord is one of the uh, purifying nine processes of devotional service. And here the uh, Shruti mantra is, is in the form of a prayer. And Prabhupada said that impersonalists cannot be purified in this way because they do not offer personal prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even though they sometimes offer prayers, the prayers are not directly toward the Supreme Person. Do devotees offer personal prayers because they knew, know who to offer those prayers to. Like uh, Govinda, Madhi Purusham, Tamaham, Pajami. I worship, 
I offer my respectful obeisances unto Govinda, to Krishna. And that's the way to offer prayers. And if one continues to offer such prayers, such personal prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's el eligible to become a pure devotee and in return, return back home, back to Godhead. And it's mentioned here in the Brahma Jyoti, there are unlimited Vaikuntha planets and each has a predominating Narayan Vishnu deity, um, a form of Vishnu with a different name. If you look at the Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto, uh, the dust jacket has a picture. I don't know if uh, Rasaraj, if you're the host, if you can bring up a picture. I don't know how to do that. But on the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, you can see Krishna Loka, but in outside there's uh, the Brahma Jyoti shining and then all the Vaikuntha planets. Srila Prabhupada designed this. It's cover. a cover page, Mataji, you are talking? Yeah, you know the Srimad Bhagavatam first canto? Or a picture of the Vaikuntha Lokas with Krishna Loka. Krishna Loka, the topmost planet. Okay, Mataji, you can continue. I'll search it and if you find, I'll share. Yeah. But it's described that just like we can't see the sun globe because of the bright shining rays, the Brahma Jyoti is even brighter. It's so bright that it, it blocks one's vision and um, we have to penetrate the coverings of this material universe and then penetrate the Brahma Jyoti to reach the Lord's personal blissful abode. And in that abode, there's the cover. I'm sure you've all seen it. It's very beautiful, but it has Krishna Loka with the shining rays. And that's the Brahma Jyoti and all the different Vishnu planets. And all the Vishnus have different names according to the position of the, uh, the Sankha, Chakra, Padma, Gada. Like we have Pradyumna, Sri. Aniruddha, Sri Hari, different names like that. And the Lord is unlimited. There's millions and millions. Of Jeeva, what is that Vish Mahavishnu lying in the causal ocean? What is that planet? That's the Mahatattva. Oh. Right there. That's the Mahatattva, which is one fourth of the whole creation. Ekapad Vibhuti. The rest is Tripad Vibhuti, three fourths of the creation. But that's also lying within the Brahma Jyoti. <clears throat> So the Mahatattva is the material uh, yes. material part of the creation, right? Right. And then the other three quarters is the spiritual. Right, the spiritual world. And the Mayavadi impersonalists, they do not look beyond the Brahma Jyoti. They settle for, that's their goal. Their ultimate goal is just to reach the, <clears throat> reach the Brahma Jyoti. And uh, we gave the example before of like a Golubjaman or a sweet ball or something. So... Uh, the Brahma Jyoti would be considered to be just like smelling that sweet. So they settle for smelling it. And the Paramatma realization is for you can smell it and also see it. And then the uh, Bhagavan realization is you can smell it, you can see it, but then you can also taste it. You touch it and you taste it. Everything is there. But so the uh, Mayavadi impersonalists, they settle for just smelling that sweet. The One thing I found, Mataji, see if this... Uh... Yeah, that's fine. You, they can, you can meditate on this as we're talking. <laughs> the Brahma Jyoti is also, it's mentioned that it's also the same place that Krishna's enemies can go. Um, when the uh, demons are killed by Krishna, they can also... Uh, enter into the Brahma Jyoti. And uh, Prabhupada says, so do we think that a place given to Krishna's enemies is a very covetable place? <laughs> no. Well, not for the devotees. For them, the Brahma Jyoti is like hell. Uh, this uh, great Vaishnava devotee, Prabodhananda Sarasvati, he composed a very beautiful um, verse. I don't know it, but in it, he mentions how for a devotee, the Brahma Jyoti is just like hell. 
Mati Kaivalyam Narakayate. Yes, Kaivalyam Narakayate. That's right. <clears throat> it's in his Chaitanya Chandramrita, number five. It, the Kaivalyam Narakayate is that spiritual light, the Brahman effulgence. It's just like hell for the devotee. And the planets of the de demigods, they're called Tri Dasha Pur Puryate. Tri Dasha Pur. They're like the will of the wisp or uh, Akasha Push Pushpayate, a phantasmagoria. The karmis are the fruit of workers. They aim for the heavenly planets. But for a devotee, those heavenly planets are just like a flower in the sky, akasha pushpayate. They have no real existence because they're temporary. And the yogis, they struggle to control the senses by yam, niyam, asana, pranayam, da, 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 dhyana, dharyan. But the senses, they're so strong they're like venomous snakes, serpents for the yogi. So they try to repress their senses. But for the bhakta, those dangerous senses are no longer a threat because they engage their senses in the service of Krishna, the master of the senses, Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam Bhakti Ruchate. So these senses are purified just by engaging them in Krishna's service. So therefore, Protkata damstrayate, the poisonous fangs of that serpent of, or the serpent senses are removed for one who surrenders to Krishna and engages his senses in Krishna's service. And uh, the yogis, theirs is more like a repression or suppressing the senses. But this, our senses do need some engagement. We're by nature active. The soul is by nature active. Even great mystics like uh, Vishwamitra Muni has fallen victim, you know, to their senses. And we pray, Sarira Vijaja Jitendriya Teheka Jiva Pele Vishaya Sagare, that this material body is a lump of ignorance and our senses are a network of past leading to death. And of all the senses, which is the most voracious and uncontrollable? The tongue, the tongue. That's right. <clears throat> the tongue is most voracious and uncontrollable. But the Lord is so kind, he gives us prashadam to help, just to help control that tongue. <clears throat> it's better to subdue our dangerous senses naturally by engaging them in Krishna's loving devotional service than by, um, and by experiencing the, the bhava bhakti or the bhakti ras from engaging our senses that higher taste, rasovarjam, raso piyasya, param drishtva nivartate. By seizing such engagements and by experiencing a higher taste, we become fixed in consciousness. It's better to do that than to repress <clears throat> because more, more likely if we don't engage our senses in some service and replace it, then they'll, those serpents, you know, they'll still have their venom and they'll bite at some time. Um, Haridas Thakur, he was even approached by uh, Maya Devi. He was approached by a prostitute and then uh, Maya Devi herself, and he wasn't moved in the least from his sadhana. His determination was not affected by uh, the allurements of uh, Maya Devi or the prostitute and because he was experiencing that uh, rasa, his. Uh, that mellow of love, you know, for Krishna. So the devotee's position is the most secure because they're engaged in Krishna's service. They're experiencing that higher taste. And it's only by devotion that Krishna can be approached. And they, they understand that as Krishna says, Bhakti Mama Bijananti, it's only by devotion that he can be understood. He doesn't say by karma, he doesn't say, uh, by karma, one can understand me. He doesn't say, by jnana, one can understand me. Or by yoga, one can understand me. But he says clearly, bhakti mama bijananti, simply by devotional service, one can understand me. Yavanyas chasmi tattvataha. We can know him as he is in truth, only by devotion. Except for devotional service, there's no possibility of understanding the complete absolute truth. 
And automatically, when you understand the complete uh, absolute truth, understanding of his Paramatma and Brahma Jyoti features are already there. Just like if you, Prabhupada gives the example, if you have a $100 bill, automatically your $10 bill, your $1 bill, your $5 bill, they're all taken care of. Whereas other processes will fall short of this. They may understand the sat feature of the Lord, his eternal feature, or they may understand sat and chit, his eternal feature and have knowledge, some knowledge of the Lord. But the ananda is reserved for the bhakta, for the bhakta, the devotee. The Lord's personal, eternal, divine, blissful realm is reserved for the devotee. They're able to easily penetrate the material covering, easily penetrate the Brahma Jyoti, and easily enter into Krishna's eternal realm and engage in loving service with the Lord. But wherever the devotee is, they're with Krishna, the pure devotee. He carries the Lord within his heart. Uh, the verse that Prabhupada quotes a lot, Premanjana Charita Bhakti Valochina Santasadaiva Hidayeshu Biloki Anti Yam Shama Sundara Machinchikuna Swarupam Yobindamari Pusham Tamam Bajami. That the devotees they see the Lord in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. They see the Lord clearly. They see the Lord always and they see the Lord everywhere. Prabhupada said that there's this uh, unguent, he said, swarma in India, that when you apply it to your eyes, <clears throat> your sight becomes clear immediately, becomes bright. So <clears throat> if we smear our eyes with the love of God, everything will become clear. There'll be nothing left to be understood. As Krishna says himself in Bhagavad Gita that, Whoever knows me as the supreme personality of Godhead without doubting is to be understood as the knower of everything. And he therefore engages in my devotional service. Are there any questions so far? Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Dandavat uh, Pranam. Uh, Mataji, uh, so regarding jnanis and yogis, I think the way you uh, explain that they can see it or they can smell it, they mm. cannot test it. Mm. Now, I'm just trying to understand the smell part. So smelling is uh, meaning they have knowledge. That's it. Is that a correct understanding? Um, yeah, they have some awareness. There's some awareness there. Just like the Brahma Jyoti, there is some sense of, um, I mean, it's not real happiness in the sense of bhakti ras happiness, but it's really, they have some relief of suffering. So that's the happiness of uh, Brahman realization. There's no suffering. And a lot, actually you can relate in the material world. A lot of the happiness people are experiencing here is simply relief of their suffering. You know, people take intoxication and they become numb, you know, to the, they take it because they're suffering, you know, and then the suffering is gone. Therefore, they think they're happy. <clears throat> That's kind of like the Brahman, there's no suffering. But in order to really have happiness, to really exper experience the bliss, there has to be relationship. And that's the unique feature of Krishna <clears throat> in his <clears throat> Galokas, all these varieties of loving relationships that he uh, engages in with his uh, pure devotees. And that's not experienced in the Brahma Jyoti. They just are, you know, they exist. I, I was, that's just one example. I mean, you can take the sun too. Okay, so there's the sun and you, you see the sun shine. That's, a, that's another example. So you see the sunshine. And, or Paramatma realization, they see the sunshine and they see a disc. They see the glow. 
<clears throat> and then Bhagavan realization, they see the sunshine, they see the disc, but they enter into the planet, they see the sun god, they see all the palaces, they see everything there and they're able to, <clears throat> you know, enjoy it. So there's just different phases of realization of the absolute truth. <clears throat> and Bhagavan is the ultimate, the highest. There's nothing higher. Everything's there in the Bhagavan realization. So, so Mataji, uh, the example that you say, uh, gave that sun and sun rays, uh, very nice example. Now, the question is, uh, sun rays, meaning the Brahma Jyoti, for example. Yeah. And I think I'm just trying to understand why for devotees, it is a hellish because sun rays itself, they are not hellish. But I think uh, the only thing what missing is the personal relationship. And yeah. that is the hellish aspect. Is that correct, Nathaji? Yes, because there's no relationship. That's right. That's right. The Brahma Jyoti, in the Atmarama verse, in the Bhagavatam, in the purport, um, it mentions that the the uh, realization of impersonal Brahman is comparable to the water contained in the pit of a calf's hoof. So it's in relation, in relation to the bliss that the devotee experiences in the Bhagavan realization, the Brahma Jyoti is, seems like hell. You know, if they can't serve the Lord because their love is so great, they just want to serve the Lord. If they can't serve the Lord, then it's hellish. So it's in relation to what the devotee experiences in relation to Krishna, you know, and their loving exchanges, either as a servant, as a friend, as it's like uh, the Brahma Jyoti would be like time out, you know, it's like, like, what did I do wrong? I can't, I can't be with you. I can't serve you. I can't, you know, I can't love you. It seems more like a punishment. It is spiritual suicide. Yeah, it's compared to spiritual suicide. And Mataji, uh, one, one example has been given. It's like uh, a mother will, ha will uh, have the child uh, when the child will be in the womb and she's waiting for the child to come out. And the child, because she can have the relationship with the child, but as soon as the child comes, the child says, I want to go inside the womb. So that can be the example, like we want to yeah. go into the divulgence. Yeah. It helped me understand it by thinking of time out. You know, if a, a child um, has to sit in a corner, do nothing, stare at the wall or something, you know, you just have to be there. You can't play with your friends. You can't, you know, do whatever you do. So, so the devotee, he's having such a good time um, serving the Lord and his eternal rasa with the Lord. And it, it just can't be compared to anything else. And then he's, if he's sent to like the Brahma Jyoti, it's like, whoa, like he said, it's spiritual suicide. It's, it's, it's hellish for them. Maji, in this verse, uh, it talks about Brahma Jyoti covering Krishna, right? But uh, in Kunti's prayers, Kunti says that, you know, you are covered by your uh, curtain of uh, deluding energy. You are invisible to the foolish observer exactly as an actor is dressed as a player, is not recognized. So yeah. that there she says that you are covered by Maya, uh, like for people who are foolish, like Maya is covering. And for devotees, sometimes the yoga Maya covers Krishna. So how is that compared to Brahma Jyoti? Um, in the sense that they're, they're not able to perceive Krishna, you know, they, they're attracted to Maya. So they, all they see is Maya. They see the material world, how I can enjoy. There's no knowledge or awareness of Krishna. So it's like a curtain. So the Brahma Jyoti too, is like, it, it's, it's covering uh, everywhere. It's so bright. And then people are attracted to that. And if they want to attain that, it's like, that's also like a curtain. But if it's removed, that illusion or that, you know, as, as far as the Maya, if that illusion is removed or that dazzling effulgence is removed, you want something more than the Brahma Jyoti, 
you want a loving relationship with the Lord, then you'll experience that. And so in both that. cases, you have to do devotional service to, for it to vanish, right? Even from, uh, to escape from Jama, Brahma Jyoti and to escape from Maya. Yeah, it's the answer to everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the only solution, you know. You know, the nine processes of devotional service, hearing, chanting, it, it's solution for everything, yeah. One thing very interesting that, right, in a, uh, any type of question, the answer is bhakti. That's what I realized. There are yeah. a thousand questions, but the answer, very easy to remember answer. It's difficult to remember questions, but anyone asks anything, the answer, you say bhakti, that is correct. Right. <laughs> and, it, and for anyone to have any success in any other process, it has to be mixed with bhakti, you know, or their so-called success. And, and impersonalists even offer prayers. Like, what does that mean? Who are they offering prayers to? That means some, there's someone superior. If we are all one, or if I am God, why would I offer prayers? You know what I mean? But like Prabhupada said, they're not addressing their prayers to the Supreme. Therefore, they're not purified. It's not the bhakti process, of, you know, it's not vandanam, uh, one of the devotional processes. Yes, bhakti. Only by devotional service can I be understood as I am. Marji, what happens to the demons? They just uh, stay in the Brahma Jyoti forever and that's about it. And they can't escape that. No, well, I heard you can make advancement from the Brahma Jyoti also. You can either, either they fall or they can make advancement. Fall back, you know, because there's no engagement and there's still maybe some tinge of desire. They fall down again to engage in philanthropic work or Then how can they uh, elevate to spiritual world, Mataji, if they cannot do anything in Brahma Jyoti? Because there is no activities, no action. They stay idle. I mean, if I, if you could do something for, you know, at least for either some kind of bhakti, then we can think that, okay, there is a chance to elevate to spiritual world. But how can they go to the spiritual world then? By the mercy of a pure devotee. Okay. Yeah. I mean, from even though even though they stay in the Brahma Jyoti, they can get mercy? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's what I heard. Uh, I have to do more research, but uh, I heard there's uh, great souls, you know, like Narada Muni. They travel everywhere, and simply mm -hmm. by their association, one may be attracted to the Lord. Mataji, I think uh, also it has been mentioned that it is like going from negative to zero, but there is no positive aspect. So we're just um, getting that peace, but not Ananda. Right, right. By serving the Lord. But sometimes it, it says, just like in that one purport to the Atmarama verse, it says the transcendental bliss in the realization of impersonal Brahman. So there is some sense of, uh, of satisfaction, you know, um, in the realization of impersonal Brahman, but it's compared to the scanty water contained in the pit made by a cow's hoof. But in relation to the uh, rasa, nanda felt by the devotees, it's hellish. You know, it's just relief of suffering. You feel good when you're not suffering, but it's not uh, like real happiness on its own. It's simply relief of suffering. Right? It's like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. 
you know, when the hammer's away, oh, I feel good, I feel good. And then hit yourself again. The relief of suffering. And you're suffering, but when it's over, you feel, you, you know, you think you feel good, but it's not a happiness in of, its, of itself. It's not real ananda, but it's relief from suffering. Or Prabhupada sometimes explains it as a drowning man taking a breath, breath of fresh air. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he's being dunked in the water, you know, but then he comes up and gets that fresh, oh, you know, he's dunked again. Nobody wants to suffer. And Brahma, the Brahma Jyoti. The Brahma what is being dunked, Mataji? The, oh, being in Brahma Jyoti is like being dunked. No, it's like that coming out and getting that uh, relief from being dunked. <laughs> but what is what? Where is that being in Brahma? Where is that feeling? The happiness. The there's no true happiness, Maji. There's only temporary relief from suffering. In in the Brahma Jyoti, okay. right? In oh, in the material yeah. world. Oh, we in the material suffering. world. Yeah, we're suffering in the material world, and then okay. when we have relief from that suffering, we think we're happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that that suffering. Kamala Dala Jala, you know, that momentary. Yeah, like people take intoxication to relieve their suffering, right? And they think they're happy, but it's not really happiness. It's simply relief from that suffering. But you know, how big is Brahma Jyoti Maji? It just surrounds the, the spiritual. It's unlimited, unlimited. How can you measure unlimited? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's like the frog in the well. It's big, see, big, big. It's just like Krishna Loka is also unlimited. Well, we can't fathom with our limited, limited, tiny brains. But you have to pass through Brahma Jyoti to get to the Venkunta Lokas, right? Yes, they're in the they're in the Brahma Jyoti. Yes, it says you pass through, and you. See the Vishnu's there. Didn't it say something like that in the purport? Meet the Vishnu's. Pass through the Brahma Jyoti and meet, meet the Vishnu's there. That was interesting. Madhi, is there any book where it says which Vishnu is, uh, has a wad in the hands? Um, not to my knowledge, but I don't know. Maybe somewhere in the Vedas. But uh, it's unlimited, so I don't know. What is the question, Mataji? You asked which Vishnu has what? So uh, the Vishnu form has four hands, right, Prabhu? Depending on the position of the conch, disc, uh, club, and the uh, lotus flower, the Vishnu is called, like, say, Hari or Adokshaja or somebody else, you know. Okay. Or yes. even also, I think some of the Vishnus are standing, right? So the, even the position the Vishnus are in. Um, I. I don't imagine that he's always standing on the vision, you know, on the planet. I don't know. I don't know. No, uh, no, no, not, no, Mataji, not in the planet, in the Paramatma, in the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the heart, Prabhupada says he's standing only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's standing and he's the size of like your thumb. That's because, why the Kiro Dakshai Vishnu always thought has a standing position. Because Kirodakshai Vishnu is the one who resides in everyone's heart. Yes. And he resides in Shweta Dweep. It says here that. Oh, I lost me. Oh, here. The yoga system teaches the serious student to meet the Vishnu tattvas after going beyond the 24 material elements of the cosmic creation. So to meet the Vishnu tattvas. And you also have to call, cross the Viraja River, right? Yeah. So you better learn how to swim. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and it says that the Brahma Jyoti is everywhere, but this is a dark, the material is dark. It's covered by all these layers, but still some Brahma Jyoti seeps in. It's so bright. But Maltipriya, remember, it's like as big as a calf's hoof print if you just take shelter of Krishna's yeah, lotus feet. that's what I was thinking. <laughs> that's right. <Mother. laughs> yeah. so, so just surrender to Krishna's lotus feet, then we don't have to worry. <laughs> yeah. And 
See, it all comes back. It all comes back to bhakti. Yes. <laughs> and if you see this big picture, right, there is a small tunnel to go to. Uh, oh, that's the tunnel. The tunnel. Tunnel is the Hare Krishna Krishna. You see this? <laughs> that's the lifeline. Yeah. This is the tu tunnel, very small. Everyone can go. You can cross Brahma Jyoti. You can cross Karuna Ocean. Everything. So that that is the secret. If you want to go into the tunnel, that we need to chant Hare Krishna. It will take us to. Yeah. Even in Bhagavad Gita, it says Madhuri three forms of uh, Krishna: Vadanti tas tas no Vadanti tas tatpa vidas tatya tatpam yajnam abhi advayam Brahma Brahmeeti Paramatmeeti Bhagavan iti shabdate. Yeah, three aspects of the absolute truth. And Prabhupada discusses this a lot. It's a reoccurring theme, you know, in Bhagavatam class, we hear it, we hear in the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita and uh, in Prabhupada's pranam prayer. I mean, he uh, is kindly preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Dev and delivering the Western countries which are filled with impersonalism and voidism. So it's an important topic for us to understand that it, it's, um, Impersonalism is widespread. It's easiest to understand, Prabhupada said in the purport. And it's kind of like the natural, um, because we suffer in the material world, so therefore everything must be, you know, not have form. It, you know, you think it must be the opposite of this. It seems like a natural conclusion that people will come to. It's not easy because uh, when there's a personal God, it means we have a responsibility. When there's no God, it means you can do whatever you want. You know, it's easier to be an impersonalist or to it's easier to uh, not believe in God, to be an atheist. Because Dharma itself is uh, um, defined by Bhagavan, you know. Yeah, that means there's where there's God. You know, there's yeah. God has laws, you know, you have to live as Dharman to Sakshat Bhagavat Pranita. Yes. No, Jeeva, in one sense, yes, it's good to be impersonal, but in another sense, it doesn't make sense to be uh, atheist right. because the uh, the universe is at such order that you cannot have such order without a human being, or I mean, right. not human, without a, right. a higher intelligence. So it has to be a form, Bhagavan who's running the affairs because everything, seasonal changes, like if Prabhupada gives the example on the road, if there are street lights and if there's traffic lights, you know, you know that there is a municipality, the government, somebody is doing it. It doesn't just come on its own. Similarly, when we look at the seasonal changes, when we look at the order in the universe, the atoms, the way the universe is formed, there has to be, you know, even scientists believe there's a higher intelligence. There's a group of scientists that don't believe in the, um, right. The other theory, what is that Darwinian theory that it just came out of a big bang or something like that, you know, that there is higher intelligence in the universe. That's why devotees are considered the most intelligent because they understand that there is intelligence behind everything and that I should surrender to this person. I have a duty towards him. Yeah. No, when you think about it, it is more logical to have God. Mm -hmm. It's illogical to say there is no God. I know. I know. Uh, there are plenty of illogical people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and make sure you don't associate with them. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll become illogical too. <laughs> you can associate with them as long as you're preaching to them. <laughs> I, 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 not. <laughs> I have one in my neighborhood <laughs> that I constantly associate with. <laughs> I know, I'm not afraid to tell her what who what I follow. <laughs> yeah, that's good. She'll get purified. You give her. I know. I tell her constantly. Yeah. And, and sometimes she she you know she wants to believe it, and she said like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She'll go sometimes because she doesn't want to believe it, but she'll just well, listen to me again? politely. Huh? But you know what? Maybe in another life she will come because she does tulsi service. She waters tulsi. Yeah. She saw them all so the time. <laughs> I have no doubt that in another life she is going to get some so quirky, that for the, sure. Even at the end, you know, I've heard like some parents of devotees, you know, they they um, ask their one mother asked their son, "Is your Krishna here now?" You know, when she was dying. Right, right. 
So she might, even atheists, they meet God as death. You know, sometimes that might be their turning point, you know, because they're so know. out of she, she control, think, you know. Yeah, she thinks there's nothing after death, but I can tell she's fearful of death, you know. Yeah. So whenever she's distressed, I, I give her some relief, you know. Yeah. And, and I've even logically talked to her and she doesn't have a logical answer back, but she still doesn't want to believe. Mm -hmm. So, and there is, and she actually belongs to an atheistic society. There's a big society here in Connecticut. Yeah, that keeps their... Uh... Yeah, yeah, so they have, they have company. That's why I know there are plenty of those people. And besides, even in communist countries, they do not believe in God, you know? Yeah, yeah. So there are entire countries that are like that. That's because they were programmed. Now, now the Russian countries, like Niranjan Maharaj and all, are preaching in the <coughs> former Soviet Union country. Yeah, and that's because Christian the communists religion. ruled them. And my one of my friends, who's to be my neighbor, Ukrainian, she said they had a curriculum in school saying that there is no God. Yeah, and they try to prove that there is no God, that it is illogical, and how can God know all your mm -hmm. actions? They don't believe in Paramatma in the heart. They can say, how can anybody know anybody else's actions? And so they try to kind of uh, rationalize it and they say there is no God. And they've been taught like that from for generations. Yeah, even but in now, China, it's still like that. Yeah. So you see the tra youth training. Important. Yeah. Komaran, Acharad, Pragyo, Pilar Maharaj. I have to go to another class, Jeeva. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. For but, but there's an atheist joke. An atheist, upon viewing a few people praying together, commented to his friend, will they ever learn that prayers are a total waste of effort and time? And then out of his habit, he said, thank God I'm not an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mother Jeeva. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji.